Hi, I'm Tammy, and this is Michael, and today we're starting off with Timothy, uh, chapter one. Michael? So, it's a new book today. We finished first and second Thessalonians. Now we're going to, um, me and Tammy are going to teach the book of Timothy, and we're starting it. We'll start with a prayer, and we repent in Yeshua Messiah's perfect name, and and we pray for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, and strength in Jesus' perfect name. And here we have the first epistle to Tiffany, or <laughs> Timothy. And Timothy was given what we think is the earliest instructions for early arrangement of a church. Um, these instructions were being of the simplest nature, and this is a doctrinal book, and this is how... This is what God expects of you to act when you, you're a Christian person. There's lots of detailed instruction here. And this is all God's word. It's not man's imagination. It's divine revelation. And go ahead. We're going to start 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. So there's a big introduction there, Paul, that's Saul, who was Saul before in uh, the book of Acts, is Paul, and it's good old Paul, our buddy, an apostle, that's a sent out one, a disciple is a disciplined student, and then once you get a working knowledge, it's possible you could become an apostle and be sent out to serve or teach, be part of a many-membered body in any capacity, and Paul was a teacher. Apostle of Jesus Christ. That word Jesus Christ means Yahshua, Messiah. That means salvation of Yahweh. That's salvation of Jehovah. And Christ means anointed one. By the commandment of our God's, our Savior. There is one example of Christ being called God. And our Savior Jesus Christ is an office of God and he is the office of salvation it's the only way to get to your father Lord Jesus Christ which is our hope go ahead Tim unto Timothy my own son in the faith grace mercy and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord so we have um, unto Timothy my own son which this word son means yes it means of natural descent but in this particular case, it's not, um, you know, son, go mow the yard. This is son like a natural, naturally of one of God's children, one of God's chosen into the many-membered body. You could be chosen into the many-membered body, but that's up to you to make that choice. Whomsoever will. Paul uses this expression, my son, in great affection to this um, young man, Timothy, apostle even. Go ahead, Timmy. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So verse 2, I didn't finish it. Unto Timothy my own son, and we just covered that, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. What is mercy? Mercy means divine compassion. This is peace. Peace means not being disturbed. Ability to know what's going on on the world stage and how it's written in prophecy. Therefore, Satan's four hidden dynasties don't disturb us. They alarm us. Uh, they get our attention, but it's in a calming manner for us in the know. It's not a mystery to us. This is prophecy coming true. What is grace mentioned here in the second verse? Grace is your unmerited favor. Grace is a divine, supernatural influence on your heart and its reflection in your life. It's your gift from God, your benefits package from God, if you know and obey the content, the conditions of God's instructions to us. And that means having a working knowledge of this Bible here. Go ahead, Timmy. Verse 3, which you already read. And I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. That means charge some. That means I transmit a message to you, and this is a straight-up doctrine. And don't teach another doctrine. Verse 4, Timmy. 
neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do so do neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions Let, let's just break this down what is a fable it's the same thing it's fiction it's myth mythology deceptions old wives tales fabrications figments theories remember proverbs 19 21 there are many schemes in a man's heart nevertheless the counsels of god shall stand remember proverbs 14 12 there are many ways that seem right unto man but the end they are the ways of death and what's the ways of death the ways of death is the ways of satan it seems right it seems okay seems pleasant seems harmless seems popular seems convenient etc we have to be careful okay go ahead timmy now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned so we saw the word commandment in verse one and that meant the commandment of our god it was said and that is an authoritative order now we see this word now in the end of the commandment is charity this word commandment here is a different word basically the same it means a mandate a message so now the end of the message is charity and what charity is is pure love that's what the word charity means of a pure heart of a good conscience of faith unfeigned so what does unfeigned mean remember in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 in that general area we see that um, God knows your heart and your intent. Satan doesn't know this. He doesn't know how you're, you're, you're feeling, but he sure can influence. Unfeigned means the opposite of being a hypocrite. It's what's in your heart. It's what's in your mind. Faith is a big word, and people seem to take this word and just think that's all she wrote. That's all I need is faith, and I'm just going to faith the way the sun goes down day, and day, day in and day out. Faith means your moral conviction. That's your creds. That's you accepting Christ and gaining a working understanding of God's word will change who you are. You can't just sit there and go, that's who I am, man. That's who I am. That's, that's what I do. It will change your reactive attitude that controls your actions and feelings. Remember James 2.17. You can faith away all you want, but faith without works is dead. So unless you work at it, you can fade away all you want, but you'll just end up being one of these unfeigned ones. You'll be a hypocrite, because it's not in your heart. Go ahead, Tim. What verse are we on now? Five, six. six. From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. Lots of people love vain jangling, and vain jangling is being a blabbermouth. Vain jangling is exactly that. It means telling stories and inserting Bible verses here and there, standing there in front of a huge audience or a small audience with a backwards collar on or whatever. Me and Tammy have a thing. We don't talk about individuals or other religions or other doctrines or other, what, people. But are you listening to a blabbermouth or are you listening to someone who's teaching God's Word? It sounds great. We just, we just studied that. In the last verse, in the last couple of verses, things that sound good, things that um, seem okay, they're pleasant, they're harmless, they're popular, they're convenient. I'll admit I've watched hundreds of hours of sermons where you got a great storyteller up there who inserts a few Bible verses here and there, and people will support this, and they will buy book after book after book and be biblically illiterate. Go ahead, Tammy, let's just get out of this verse and go to the next one. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. We're following a subject here because God didn't write this like uh, it'd be a Bible dipper or just take a verse here and there. So there's a subject forming here. So who are these people that are vain janglers? They desire, they wish to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whether they affirm. They, they're, they're preachers, or reverends, etc., whatever you want to put in front of your name. 
that's that that seem nice and laid back they seem chummy friendly easy going if you put your eternal soul on the line listening and supporting these kind of people you won't know the loss and this is what God has to say not what I have to say or Tammy has to say or some other book has to say it's what God has to say well we'll give a few examples Proverbs 28 9 he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be an abomination that's a heavy verse Matthew 7 21 to 23 this is Christ on judgment day when you are standing there in front of God and where's your uh, babbling teacher now no it's just you and God and what's Christ say to you can you imagine this is where the gnashing of teeth and 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 just the faint of heart when Christ says I never knew you depart from me you never took the time to read his book but you sure listen to a lot of sugary sweet uh, sermons with a few Bible verses inserted for religious convenience or what about when Christ said and we're talking about verse 7 here teachers of the law when Christ came in Matthew chapter 5 17 18 when Christ says I came not to change one jit or jot of prophecy or law he didn't come to change the law the law still stands and uh, me and Tammy teach a lot through Jesus Christ our Savior the living word here Stay tuned. Go ahead, Tammy. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. What do you mean use it lawfully? That's our Christian standard. That's your standard. That's your stability. That's our rules. So when you get to meet other people in the many member body and they have a working knowledge, you know, well, hey man, this guy could be pretty cool to hang out with and talk to. Because we have the same standard. We have the same Christian standard. Go ahead, Jimmy. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. The law is not made for a righteous man. Well, if you think you're righteous, uh, you better take good inventory of who you think you are and you better humble it down a little bit and um, think about stuff compared to Christ none of us even compare we all fall short that's why we have repentance what is unholy when he says here unholy people that's wicked people what is it when he says uh, profane profane means people with loose boundaries heathen wicked people you know those people that will just they just don't seem to care you know do we really need them around no they're drag um murderers christ said fear not remember when remember when christ said fear not those who can kill the body but those who can kill your soul that's what this is being implied here when it's talking about murders of fathers and murders of mothers um manslayers that's murderers that's premeditated malicious murder that's criminal homicide that's one of the big ten in exodus chapter 20 the ten commandments and that's different than war that's criminal homicide um what other words do we got in here oh we got some nasty ones okay go ahead tammy what's the next verse for whoremongers for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So don't get all bent out of shape when uh, you hear the word horror and whoremongers, because it's in here 99 times. Whether it's, um, anyways, what is a whoremonger? It's a male prostitute. It's an unprincipled person with unprincipled morals who defile other human beings, who um, violate, pervert, and lead astray under other human beings morally uh, against what is natural. They're perverted, promiscuous, degenerates. And do we, if you're sitting here teaching the Bible and you got a congregation, like you pray for them, you know, God loves everybody. But he doesn't love what you're doing. 
you just pray for your soul. If you, if you see people like this, you just, you know, you just hope they come around, hope they repent, and hope we can have a good conversation here. We can't bend the rules for them. The rules are here in black and white, and they've been here forever, and they will be here forever. Alpha, Omega, forever. Okay, go ahead, Tammy. According to the glorious gospel oh. of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Um, I forgot a few words there. Got carried away. Anyways, um, going back to verse 10, perjured persons, like they're a drag. A perjured person, that means, uh, your word means nothing. It means you have no credibility. It means you falsely swear on something. Like, uh, how many times a day do you got to hear, I swear I didn't do it. I swear that's not mine. I swear it's not me. Uh, I swear, I don't know what, I don't know how that happened. Like, what a drag! It's just such a drag. And and here God's warning us about these people in the Bible. This is God's word telling us that these people, we pray for them in a certain way. We pray that they come to repentance. But do we want them around us? No, man. Is that natural? No. Until they want to change what's inside them, then then drift. Okay. Now, what verse was that, Tammy? Uh, you read verse 11 according to the glorious gospel so here we have one thing as a subject comes around to according to the glorious gospel to the blessed God which was committed to my trust glorious now here's the other end where we would rather hang around people like this honorable dignified praiseworthy to be worshipped that's God and you know we, of course we don't praise and dignify God's people but the gospel is what I meant to say. That's what glorious means. And blessed, this is the supreme God. Go ahead, Timothy read 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. The ministry, ministry means service. Ministry means servant. It doesn't mean asking you for money, even though you're supposed to give money. But you only give money after you've been taught God's word. If you're sitting in the in, in church and you're sitting there and you're not being served God's word, what are you being served? Are you being served some of this some um, vain jangling? Are you just sitting there singing song after song after song? Like church means you and the Bible being taught. It does not mean a bricks and mortar stone building. It could take place in there, or it could take place right here, right now. Anyways, uh, so, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, and he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Okay, go ahead, Tammy. Who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So that was who Paul was before. That was who Paul was before. He, um, his job was to persecute and he did his job with a lot of fire in his belly and that's what he did and as he describes his job in Acts in the book of Acts and you should read it for yourself um, and he did it ignorantly and he didn't believe and then something happened on that road to Damascus go ahead Timmy and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus and the grace of our Lord and we've covered the word grace and was exceedingly abundant and faith in love which is in Jesus that's Paul describing how he repented and then he took the first step being born again and then he took the next step because the first step is just your milk step it's like a baby on infant formula okay and then you have to get into the meat you have to feed your soul and the only way to feed your soul is by this doctrine this word this Bible by learning it it's God's love letter to you personally Go ahead, Jim. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. 
Oh, heavy, heavy verse. Dogging himself, calling him the chief sinner. Well, at least he admits it, and at least he repented from the heart. He was not a hypocrite. He meant it. And God knows if you mean it or don't mean it. Don't be a perjured Christian, as is described in a few verses before. Or you don't get the glorious gospel, as was described in a few verses later. Go ahead, Tim. Howbeit, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should be hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Big time verse. So let's just um, break it down a little bit. He obtained mercy. How he repented um, in Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, our Savior. Who is the most suffering of all is Jesus Christ. Because he sees us, his children, acting like this and allowing the plant to become like this. And God repented that he, he had to put us through this flesh age. Uh, quoting Genesis chapter, I forget. Um, for a pattern to them, what should hereafter? There's a pattern here. There's a, a standard how you're supposed to live. And you can't make it up and you can't you you can't just listen to some guy telling you stories that sound good because it could be the doctrine of satan because if it's yay or nay with with god let's go ahead timmy now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god be honor and glory forever mm -hmm. and ever Amen. So here we're getting our path towards everlasting life and to the only inner peace you're ever gonna ever gonna have. The king eternal, immortal, invisible. We can't see him with our flesh eyes, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And I just quoted Matthew somewhere. Uh, the only someone put in the word wise, it's not in the manuscripts. He's the only God. He's the only living God. Honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen means that is that. 18, Tammy. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. So we've already we've already said what this word means, so we don't have to go through it. When he calls him a son, it's just a very affectionate. According to the prophecies, well, these prophecies here in the Bible, which we, we cover, just stick around with us or read it for yourself and we'll teach it to you. Which went before on thee, and thou by them mightest war a good warfare. What did he go and uh, get his black belt in jiu-jitsu and a few other martial arts? Is he going to go pound the Bible into someone's head, a hardcover style? No, man. Listen, Ephesians 6.12 will explain the war that we have going. It's a spiritual war. I'm going to have to go there now. I'm going to have to find it. Ephesians 6.12. And I think I have it. It's not a flesh war. It's a spiritual war. We're warring against powers and principalities. And Satan is the prince of the air. And you know what? I'm not going to find it. So go, go ahead, Tim. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What is he talking about? He's sending Timothy out for warfare against this? So... We're talking about Satan's four hidden dynasties. We're talking about... We're, we're talking about... One worldism. We're talking about prophecy coming to life right before our eyes right now. What do you think the European Union means? Do you know that there's a North American Union right now between Mexico, Canada, and the United States? And most people say, what are you talking about? Because no one even knows that. And what is the European Union? Well, they came up with the Euro. Our new currency, and I stand here boldly saying, will be the Amero. And it will be Canada's money, United States, and Mexico's money. And the African Union comes together, and soon to be the Asian Union. 
and Satan is the supernatural sovereignty of an intellectual elite. He's going to have one bank. That's his commerce dynasty. One army type. That's his political dynasty. One religion like Chrislam or, or pushing all the religions together. Let's just all get along. And peace, peace, peace. There's never going to be peace, Jeremiah. One education. The multimedia machine. It destroys. It's a mass dumbing down. It destroys the conscious informed public that are no longer capable of critical thinking, perpetually misleading and manipulating people with mindless, endless hours of useless entertainment, TV shows, they call them reality shows, they're not reality. That's so ungodly to even think or act like that. The mass media, drugs, alcohol, any kind of entertainment to keep the human mind distracted from Satan's agenda. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in the future. But for today, we're going to finish up um, 1 Timothy. And did you read verse uh, 19? Mm -hmm. Holding faith and good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. And I'm going to read 20 because this has to come together. What's he talking about shipwreck? She talked about faith and shipwreck. Of whom Hymias and Alexander, who I delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Who is Satan? Satan's the devil. Satan is the 666. Six vials, six seals, six trump. He's the Antichrist. He's a little horn. If you want to read exactly what Satan thinks, read Isaiah chapter 14, around verse 13, 14, 12, 13, 14. You want to know who Satan is? It spells it out in black and white, simple enough, grade 5 level reading, Isaiah chapter 28. And what's this verse? We have to teach this verse. And I'm going to teach this verse through 2 Thessalonians chapter 11. And what's Paul saying here? Holding faith and good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, having made shipwreck. The e Paul was in three shipwrecks. Paul wants to teach us that there are false false apostles deceitful workers disguising themselves into apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is disguised as an angel of light he's the antichrist de facto therefore it is no great thing if his ministers all these people with their wonderful messages just pushing a few bible verses here and there ministers of righteousness don't be just don't don't, it's no great thing if his ministers of righteousness also be disguised as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And now what's Paul saying? Are they ministers of Christ? This is a question Paul's asking when he's talking about these people holding faith and good conscience. Are they ministers of Christ? Who are you listening to? Who are you putting your eternal soul on the line with? Not me. Not her. The Bible. Who's teaching it to you? Don't worry about the person. Think about the content. Is someone teaching you the Bible? Or just some fairy tale with a few verses in here and there? Or just a story or whatever? So here's Paul. Here's Paul's faith. Are they ministers of Christ? No. I am more. In labors more abundant. Paul worked hard. In stripes above measure. Oh, they fed it to him. Big time. They laid, the, they laid that flogging to his butt. In prison more frequent. He got thrown in the clink constantly. In death often. He faced death all the time. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes. Save one. That's the law of Deuteronomy chapter 25. Three. That means he got 39 smacks in the public. Across his bare butt. For what? Keeping the faith. It's no cakewalk. You will get tested. And this is what Paul went through. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times shipwrecked. At night and day I've been in the deep. You know, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. You're underwater. It's freezing cold. You're in a shipwreck. Can you imagine? Three times. And his buddies there bailed on him. And Paul says, let, let Satan have you then. Paul sent them to Satan. And you can send yourself to Satan. You write your own sentence. In journeys, often in perils of water. Paul didn't get this little luxury um, broadcast system that we have here where we can sit in climate control. He had to hoof it around some tough turf 
And listen to also what he says. In his journeys, because he was teaching this word, often in perils of water, perils of robbers, perils by my own countrymen, even dudes that I hung with, perils by the heathen, and they're everywhere today, personified, mega. Just turn your TV on. Just look out your window. In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren which we just read and you know we're just gonna wrap her up there but if you want to talk about what this guy went through and kept the faith maybe you should take inventory about how good you got it and give thanks to God and Jesus Christ our Savior and amen to that lesson Tammy and we're gonna carry on with the uh, first Timothy chapter 2 stay tuned <laughs>